In the mid-20th century, Japanese brands were synonymous with poor quality. The car industry is a good example. Early Japanese cars were actually poor quality knockoffs of European and American models. Some were hybrids of different designs that Japanese car manufacturers could get their hands on. But eventually, copying turned to recombination and the kind of incremental improvement that the Japanese are now famous for. Kaizen the Toyota way, and other ways of continuously, incrementally improving led Toyota, Nissan, Mazda, and other Japanese car companies to become the reliable brands that they are today. Whiskey is another example. But it wasn't just technology or alcohol. Japan is also an economically successful integration of Western-style non-family corporations and liberal democratic institutions tailored to their history and culture. Countries that are high on collectivism and the importance of family tend to suffer from corruption, particularly nepotism. But Japan, despite holding Confucian ideals of filial piety and hierarchy, doesn't. It has low levels of corruption around the same as Canada or Australia. Like South Korea, Hong Kong or Singapore, Japan is a new cultural recombination and proof that there are paths out of suboptimal corrupt poor equilibria that still retain cultural diversity. Multiculturalism, it's a word that means different things to different people. Some good, some bad. It can be a divisive topic for those brave enough to talk about it at a dinner party. In my book, I talk about different ideal models of multiculturalism. The no hyphen, full integrationist model typified by France, non-integrationist mosaic or salad bowl models typified by Canada, the melting pot model that creates a new blended culture associated with America. I also introduce the umbrella model that recombines the best of these to resolve the paradox of diversity, grabbing the bull by both its horns, so to speak, reaping diversity's benefits while minimizing its costs. Japan, where I am right now, will soon have to resolve this paradox. The challenge that Japan faces is a portent of things to come in many developed countries. Japan has one of the longest life expectancies and lowest birth rates, well below replacement. Around 2011, Japanese newspapers reported that adult diapers had for the first time begun outselling baby diapers. The country was running out of people to do the work to keep society running and to keep the space of the possible large enough for everyone. Some suggested robots as a solution, but the technology didn't advance fast enough for this to be a viable solution. Japan had no choice but to use a solution that had long avoided, immigration. Japan is a highly homogenous country with a general sentiment to keep it that way if they could. But by 2019, the writing was on the wall. In April 2019, the new Immigration Control and Refugee Recognition Act came into effect. The Conservative government, led by then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, sold it as a necessary step for meeting the demands of business owners who needed selective skilled migration. Immigrant numbers quickly hit record highs. Immigrants still represent just two and a half percent of the population, but that percentage will continue continue to rise and as new laws are in the works to continue the expansion. For example, uh, streamlining the path for high-skilled immigrants to, to, to join Japanese society. But what Japan hasn't done is to figure out what model of multiculturalism it wants to use. As I explained in my book, the future of Japanese society will depend on the policy choices that it makes today.